Welcome to Powerhouse Recovery Radio, Sunday nights at 8 p.m. on 100.7 FM, The Word. For every storm in life, there is a divine word from the Lord. No matter what storm you may have been through, no matter what storm you might be in right now, and no matter what storm you might be about to go into, God is here for you. You can also stream us live at powerhouseministrychurch.com or listen to archived programs if you miss a broadcast. Now, let's join our program for today. I choose you. Feldon Barner II, and thank you so much for joining us here at Powerhouse Radio. Initially, we would like to give a shout out to all of our brothers on the Ellis Unit, you wonderful brothers who are in the Extended Mentor Program, the Gang Renunciation and Disassociation Program, of course you brothers on Closed Custody, and the brothers on the Youth Defender Program. Also, we'd like to give a special shout out to all of the brothers on the Gory Unit Trustee Camp. To all of you, we want to truly say thank you for extending unto us the right hand of fellowship. And on that note, to anyone who is sensing the call of God upon your life, specifically into prison ministry, please feel free to reach out to us wherein we can prayerfully embrace you and also equip you to begin the process of getting certified as a mentor with our prison ministry. This evening, we're going to be talking about God's promise and our text is going to be taken from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 13, which reads as follows. This second epistle, my beloved, I now write unto you 
in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. First, knowing this, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, it perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that were therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought we to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. As we have read verses 1 through 13, we should take note that verse 4 says, where is the promise of his coming? Verse 9 says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And verse 13 says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So again, tonight, we're going to be sharing about God's promise. When it comes to God's promise, God is looking for a people who will walk by spiritual insight and not by physical eyesight. The enemy desires to deceive you and I into focusing on that which is external, knowing that he cannot touch that which is internal and or that which is inside of us. The enemy does not want you and I to truly understand the assurance and or the certainty of God's promise. Now listen, when I use the term understanding, let it be known that an understanding is something that you stand under. It is an acknowledged concept or belief that you stand under. If your understanding is false, then you are standing under false pretenses and or erroneous concepts. And when you do that, that alludes to you standing under erroneous decisions, which lead to counterproductive actions and, of course, erroneous behavior patterns. Ultimately, you are standing under unbelief and doubt concerning the truth. With that much briefly shared, let it be known that it is the will of God to enlighten our understanding so that we are no longer walking in darkness and doubt, but instead we are walking in the enlightened faith and belief in God's promise. Ephesians chapter one, verses 18 says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and or the hope of his promise. Our spiritual eyes and or our spiritual understanding needs to be enlightened. Our minds need to be enlightened. Our minds need to be purged and purified from all unbelief, all doubt, all lies, all deception, false thoughts, and any vain imagination that would exalt itself or rise up against God's word and God's promise. We truly need to guard our hearts and our minds against anything that would cause us to doubt the assurance of God's promise to us, amen? The battlefield concerning God's promise primarily takes place within our mind. There is this mental wrestling match 
that takes place in our mindset or in the spirit of our mind. And that is why the opening verses of our text are committed to addressing what takes place in our mind. Look at the language in our text. Verse one says, stir up your pure minds. Our minds need to be pure in faith and belief. Our minds need to be pure or clear from unbelief. And then it goes on to say, by way of remembrance, listen, our minds need to be exercised to constantly remember, to constantly recall or recollect and meditate over and over on what God has promised. Look at verse two. Verse two says, be mindful. To be mindful is to be in a certain state of being and the state of being is to be mindful or having one's mind full or filled of the promises of God, amen, and nothing else. Verse three says, I need you to know this first. In other words, in your mind, you, you need to have a mind that is full of knowledge, amen? Full of the knowledge of this one thing or know this first and foremost. Verse eight even goes on to say, do not be ignorant of this one thing. Our mind should not be ignorant and or our minds should not ignore this one thing. It is essential to see that there is no escape in the fact that the focal emphasis within these opening verses is on the importance of our belief system, the importance of our belief, the importance of our faith. We are all to know and understand the certainty of God's promise. We are to build up our own holy faith and we are also to edify others by keeping ourselves and each other in remembrance of God's promise. Our minds should constantly be put in remembrance of the word of God, the commandments of God. And of course, we should be reminded of God's faithfulness, his faithfulness to his own people and his faithfulness to his own promises. In our text, when it refers to pure minds, it is saying that our minds need to be clear. Our minds need to be pure and unmixed. Our minds need to be pure and unadulterated or uncontaminated. All of this alludes to the imagery or picture of our thoughts being sifted just like wheat is sifted in order to be separated from chaff, amen? Our thoughts are to be sifted in order to separate the true and pure from the untrue and impure. Our minds must be pure and clear from double-mindedness and of course from impure thoughts. Our minds also must be pure and clear from wandering and or wavering thoughts. Likewise, our minds must be pure and clear if they're truly going to grasp the great truth and certainty of God's promise towards us. Listen, our, our mind can be jeopardized to be stagnated in uh, unbelief or doubt. Therefore, Peter writes this second epistle to remind us all to overcome any stagnation in our thoughts, any stagnation in our mindset that might challenge our belief system in reference to God's promise. Peter writes this second epistle to stir up your pure minds, to stir up the purifying process of our hope, the purifying process of our belief system, the purifying process of our trust in God's promise. Why? Because unbelief can creep in, doubt can creep in, Hopelessness can set in. Even spiritual stagnation or scoff can begin to cloud our minds concerning God's promise. We may begin to listen to the voices of the enemy, the voice of the world, the voice of our present circumstance. And listen, your circumstance and your situation can whisper to you sometimes. Your circumstance and your situation may say, where is the promise of God in your current situation? If we aren't mindful of God's promise, mindful of the word of God, we are subject to begin to listen to the dictates of false teachings. Listen, it's amazing what we learned over the years, but everything that we learned isn't necessarily something that we've learned concerning the things of God. 
it's amazing what we can be taught but listen everything that we've been taught is not necessarily the truth of God life has a way of teaching you things amen you learn to not believe in certain people you learn not to trust certain people that is not the will of God for you and I amen there is only one sole source of God's promise wherein you and I can truly purge and purify our minds concerning God's promise. And that one sole source is the word of God, the Holy Scriptures, the Holy Bible. God places emphasis upon our mind. Our mind needs to be pure. Our mind needs to be clear and focused upon learning, focused upon reading, focused upon studying and meditating upon the Word of God. And listen, we need to be focused upon remembering the Word of God, being taught of the Word of God, because God's Word is God's promise. The opening verses of our text places spiritual emphasis upon the utter necessity for all of us to study God's Word. So often, we are tempted to focus on things that are going on around us instead of focusing on God's word or God's promise. If we are going to overcome our inner and our outer attacks or challenges, there's no place for wandering minds. There's no place for double-mindedness. In other words, believing God one day and doubting God on another day. There's no place for a convoluted mindset that wavers at God's promise. God wants you and I to know him, to trust him, to believe him, to love him, and to stand in faith, nothing wavering concerning God's promise. If ever there was a time to focus on God's promise, believe me, we are living in such times right now. On a daily basis, our faith is being stretched. Will you exercise your faith this evening? Will you repent and trust God's promise afresh? God sent his son for you. God promises that to everyone who believes in Jesus Christ, eternal life is assured. Will you embrace and receive God's promise tonight? Imagine living your entire life from this day forward in the blessed peaceful assurance of the certainty of God's promise. God's promises are being extended to you even right now. All he requires of you is to believe him. Will you believe him tonight? Tonight, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Receive it and walk in it. Experience it personally in your own new life and abide therein. God's promise. God bless you.
Good evening, Radio Family. It's such a blessing to be able to come and share the Word of God with you on tonight. Um, Just a word of encouragement of, of God's faithfulness to His Word. In Hebrews 10 and 23, it reads, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised that is such an awesome word, you know, because God is faithful to his promises, but he also wants us to be faithful in our profession to him, professing in agreement the things that he's promised in his word. Like one of the promises is that our whole household would be saved. And so, you know, I have an example in my life where I've held on to my profession of faith, you know, concerning the salvation of my, my children. I would even tell them, that they're going to be saved whether they knew it or not and to this day I actually have that testimony even when it did not look like that they would be serving God right now they are true to that they are serving God with their lives and I just give God glory so whether it's you needing healing from God or you needing a financial breakthrough or you're asking God to bless your business or you're asking God to order your footsteps or you just need peace in your home. Whatever it is that you need from God, you must stand on his word, believe in him, that he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. And so when he says in his word, Father, you'll make us the head and not the tail. I'm in agreement with that, Father. You'll make us the head and not the tail. When he says that he will make your enemies be your footstool, I'm in agreement with the word that my enemies will be my footstool. And so we have to be careful the things that we're professing in our lives. You can't just look at your life and say what you're seeing. You have to say what you're believing God for. Get an agreement, you know, with with his word. I owe no man nothing but to love him. So when you're sitting down there and you're paying your bills and you're trying to figure it out, you know, you can begin to say, Father, I thank you that I owe no man nothing but to love him. You know, it's a it's a liberating thing to not have to figure out how things are going to happen, but just to trust him to provide for every need that you would have, to trust him to make a way out of no ways, to trust him to heal you, to deliver you, to set you free. It's such a blessing to be able to get an agreement with God's word. And so I'm going to say a quick word of of prayer. Father, I just thank you so much for this opportunity to, to share and that the hearers will be blessed and that they'll begin to get in agreement with your word and that they'll watch the profession of their faith. They won't waver, but they will be consistent with your word professing. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. Every need is met according to your riches and glory. By Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Powerhouse Recovery Radio, where we believe that for every storm in life, there is a divine word from the Lord. Join us on Sundays at 8 p.m. for Powerhouse Recovery Radio right here on 100.7 FM, the word KKHT, or stream on the web at powerhouseministrychurch.com. That's powerhouseministrychurch.com. 